Hey, it's Angel Vane, and this is episode 98 of My Author's Diary. I am an author of crime thrillers for women, and every week I take you through the ups and downs that I go through as I try to write and publish new books. So don't forget to subscribe or follow me if you haven't done so already. So I'm going to kick off this video with just a writing update um, first. No, ooh, before I do my writing update, <laughs> it is always, always such a great experience to see your work <laughs> in <laughs> book form. So I got my copies. I always order my own author copies of The Unexpected Hero and I have it right here. I think it looks phenomenal. And then I can flip it and see all my words, see my story there. So yeah, the print version looks amazing. <laughs> and I get a chance to add this to my bookshelf with all of my other published books, which I think I'm up to like five now that I've written on my own and then two more. So yeah, my catalog is growing. So yeah, I just wanted to show off my little baby. It launched last week. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, writing update. So y'all know I'm working on the Christmas Hero which is a standalone romantic suspense set in the same Hero in Paradise series. I got behind. I was literally supposed to write the book in four weeks, one act each week. Got behind that very first week. Um, so this past week, um, I, like last week I told y'all, I knew I wouldn't be able to catch it up because I was supposed to be done with it on this Sunday, which I'm recording this video on Saturday, April 24th. So I should have been finished with the entire first draft of that manuscript um, by April 25th. Knew I wasn't gonna hit that target. So current update. I finished Act 2B, so I'm at the 75% mark of the story early Friday morning. And so anything that I write today and tomorrow still counts <laughs> as last week. And then I get a jump on trying to write all of Act 3 by the end of next Sunday. And I have 10 scenes left to write to wrap up the book. And so I, I don't think there's going to be any issue with meeting my own internal deadline to get this book written. Why? Why, you might ask. I'm about to sneeze. Ew! Ew! Pollen! Okay, so in Texas, springtime, like, that tree pollen that's outside, that, like, it gets, it gets all up in my nose, and I get the itchy eyes, I get all that kind of stuff, and, um, yeah, it's not fun. So, yeah, so that just kind of jumped on me uh, right quick. Don't know why. Um, but anyway, so like I was saying, <laughs> <laughs> and I actually should edit that out, but guess what? She not going to edit out her sneeze because people sneeze, right? There's nothing wrong with sneezing. Anyway, let me stay focused. Game changer, y'all. So <laughs> I went back to working full time at the office this past week. So I worked all five days from the office. And before then, I was getting really concerned about staying on track of my writing and my writing schedule when I had extra hours being sucked away from me from, from the commute and different things and just being like exhausted coming home from work and all that kind of stuff and needing to unwind. So last weekend after I did the video and everything, I was like, okay, I know people write on their phones. Like I've never been one that thought like, oh, I'm gonna write on my phone or whatever. Um, I always either, if I had to be mobile and move around, I just took my Surface Pro. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like lugging my Surface Pro to work every day just so I can try to squeeze in some writing on um, on my lunch break. So I was like, okay, so what can I do? What can I do? So the first good thing that happened was I finally realized that Scrivener 3 for Windows got released and I am a Scrivener girl. I write everything in Scrivener. I don't do all the backstory and all save all that stuff in Scrivener. I put that in my OneNote. OneNote is where I go for all of my research, everything that I find about the stories. I have it very organized in there. Um, but Scrivener is where the writing happens. And I have been waiting for Scrivener 3 for like, you know, three years or something ridiculously long. So I was all excited. So I was downloading Scrivener 3 onto the Surface Pro so I could have it on Windows and on my iMac. But you know, my iMac. Yeah. That's the point where my video stopped recording and I had no clue. And I kept on talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. And none of it recorded. So I gotta take a pause because I'm pretty pissed right now. And I'll be back in a second. Oh, I'm so ticked off right now. I was done. Yeah, I'm sure every YouTube creator has had this happen before, but this is my first time. So I'm struggling a little bit. 
ah, where was I? Yeah, so I was really excited <laughs> about getting Scrivener 3 because I had waited to upgrade Scrivener 3 for the iMac, even though it came out years ago because my Windows couldn't upgrade to Scrivener 3 and the two files would not talk to each other. So it's not like I can go seamless back and forth between the two without doing a whole bunch of like, I don't know, just crazy stuff that I didn't want to get into because I don't want to lose my writing, right? So there I was shelling out money for Scrivener 3 on the Apple iMac and then Scrivener 3 on my Windows Surface Pro. So then I said, okay, I know there's certain people write on their phones and they talk about writing on phones and how they, you know, they write in between different things and they five minutes here, five minutes there. And that has never, ever, ever been my mentality or my mindset. The idea of writing on my phone, I'm not even a big phone person, but the idea of writing on my phone, I'm like, how can you really get into the flow state writing five minutes here, five minutes there? So I kind of just poo pooed that and just kind of like, whatever. But now I was uncomfortable enough with what the future might hold that I said, okay, let me to that because Scrivener actually has an iOS version. So I said, okay, let's just buy it. Let's just buy it and have it as a backup so that you can maybe write on your lunch break if it seems like you're falling off and can't get the writing done when you get home from work. So I go out to the Apple store and you know the Scrivener iOS and it has that little symbol there that shows that like, you know, you just download the app and I'm like, wait, like, I just need to re-download the app. Like, do I already own this? So I clicked the little button, scrimmed to download it onto my iPad, because I don't have an iPhone, right? So I, I do everything on my iPad. iPad is with me 24 seven. It is always with me. So download it onto, onto my iPad and I open it up and I see all of these old Scrivener files back from like 2016 and 2017. So this is when the very beginning of the, the initial ideas that ended up being the Accidental Hero, that is way back then. And I saw these different files and stuff and I'm like, I have literally no recollection of ever writing in Scrivener on my iPad in the past. Like none. <laughs> Like, when she do that? Like, I don't remember, but there it was, there the files were. And so then I was like, okay, so then I looked and I just refreshed myself on, okay, well exactly, how do you make it sync through Dropbox so that I can work on it on any of my other computers and still have everything kind of synced up, got that back in order. And I was like, all right, so let's kind of roll with this, right? So on Monday, when I went into work, on my lunch break, I said, okay, I'm gonna give this iPad writing thing a try. So I ate really quickly and then I opened up the iPad, I opened up Scrivener and I opened up my The Christmas Hero Scrivener file and I knew exactly because I do the thing this, this and I guess it's, it's not a trick, it's more of an author tool that, you know, or a tip that a lot of authors do to make sure that they can be productive each day in their writing sessions. And so what you do is you look ahead to, okay, what do I have to write next? What is the next scene that I have to write? What is the next thing I have to tackle so that it's already percolating in the back of your mind before that next day when you sit down to do your writing session. So I already knew exactly what was supposed to happen in the next scene that I needed to write. And so when I sat there and I opened up the iPad and I put my little fingers on the little, you know, on the screen where the keyboard just kind of pops up and I just started typing and like the words just flowed. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, just, and I'm like, it's been quite a while since I was able to like slide in so quickly into that flow state, into that writing zone where the where the hum, like Shonda Rhimes talks about, like that hum comes. It's like the train is just moving down the track, and it's just moving right. And it's been so long since like I got there that quickly, because you know a lot of times, even though I know what I'm supposed to write. I'll sit here in the home office at this, <laughs> this keyboard and be like, hmm, I don't really still know how I want to start this scene. Hmm, what should I type? Hmm, maybe I should look at something to give me some ideas. Internet is up. Oh, let's research this. Oh, let's research that. Oh, and let me check the YouTube real quick. And so it's like, there's a lot of distractions there. And that's what I found after I finished. And okay, so just, yeah, here. So, so on my lunch break, I wrote a 2,600 word scene from start to finish. Like the scene was done in one hour. And I was like, 
<laughs> it's some magic up in here, right? So I found that the simplicity of the Scrivener iOS app, where it really limits some of all that extra functionality that you have, but it is, it's just literally like a blank page and you just start typing, right? And you know, it does have the inspector on the side so I can actually look at, okay, here's the notes of what needs to go into this scene, but it's so simplified and I didn't feel um, it wasn't so easy to kind of like be distracted by other things. So like, you know, if you had, if I want to go and research something while I was writing the scene, I, I had to close down the screen the app, wait for it to sync and do all that crap, then open up something else, do my research. I couldn't have them up side by side because I have a tiny iPad. I have the like little iPad mini. Um, and so because that would have been a chore, I think that contributed to the fact that I just stayed focused. And when I came to something, I was like, oh, I can't remember what that is, or oh, I need to copy that, copy in this flashback, or oh, I need to do this. I just put a bracket with little notes to myself and I kept on rolling. And I was just like, where has this been my whole life? Like, where has it been? And I know some of y'all are watching this like, really? Like, we've been doing this. Where you been? You just not catching on? Really? Cause this is not that special. But it's special to me because it's a game changer because I never allowed myself to really be open to writing on small devices like that. And now that I've discovered it, I'm like, and again, you know, I know me, right? So it's the shiny new object right now. It's the shiny new thing that's inspiring me. It's helping me to get into that flow state really fast. I'm able to crank through scenes. Cause I mean, even to the point where later in the week, cause I didn't get a chance to write every day during my lunch break. Cause some days are just like chock full with meetings and I just, and I was just busy and I just had other stuff to do. But I found that even when I got home and I was starting my writing session, I sat on my chase lounge in my bedroom with the iPad on my lap and I crank through scenes way faster that way than coming in here and doing it on the iMac. And I'm like, this is inspiring me, right? This is really working to help me get through my scenes and I don't know how long it's gonna last, right? Shiny new object. It is the it thing in my writing process right now. But all I know is that while it is working, and I mean, it is working, um, I'm gonna ride that thing. Like I'm gonna ride it, I'm gonna ride it till the wheels fall off because I'm just really excited about how effortless it feels when I'm writing on the iPad. It really like the distractions aren't there. I go into the story, I get into the zone, I'm typing. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's been really, really, really phenomenal. And I forgot this, right? So <laughs> a lot of times I, you know, as I'm trying to drift off to sleep, I'll get that nugget that I needed that would help me kind of write another part of the scene, you know, where, where you kind of hit that roadblock and like, oh, I'm not quite sure where to go next, or I'm not quite sure how to cover something. And as I'm drifting off to sleep, I'll get that and I'm like, ping, that's what you need to do, right? And so the the words will just start playing and the story start just playing out in my mind. And normally I'm like, I don't feel like going into the computer to write this down. So what I try to do is I'll just like, I have a little notepad by my bed. So I'll just kind of like scribble down just a little bit to try to jog my memory so that in the morning I can go and like really type it out. Well, <laughs> iPad is always next to my bed at night as I'm falling asleep. So that also happened to me this week. And I was laying there and literally like the scene just started Flowing. It was weird because I had gotten to a stopping point. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to try to push it. I'm just going to pause mid scene and come back to it, right? That scene just started playing boom, 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 boom in my head. And I sat up and I was like, I just grabbed the iPad and I put it on my lap, turned the lamp on. 15 minutes later, I had finished off that scene. I cut the light off and I went to bed. That is the beauty of writing on these smaller devices like your phone or your iPad. And like, I, I was missing it. I was missing it. So again, right now it, it's working and it's working so well for me and I'm gonna keep utilizing it uh, while it is working. If it ever stops working, then I just said, no, I have to be flexible and go and utilize some of the other tools that I've also um, used in the past to see what will motivate me again. But I'm really, really, really loving writing on the iPad right now. So. That's it for this week. If you want to continue to keep up with me and all the ups and downs that I go through as I try to write and publish new books, click the subscribe button. Then don't forget to click that little silver bell so you won't miss when I'm doing a video. And I will see you next time.